at some point tonight. It's going to be Danny Richardson to get things underway here for Castleford. They're wearing interesting colours tonight. There's a bit of maroon in there. It's um, all in tribute of uh, one of the greats down the years uh, here at uh, Castleford. Maroon, white and red. And all for Adrian Vowles, who 25 years ago, playing in a similar strip to this, but there was a bit of amber in it those days, he won the Man of Steel, didn't he? Yeah, I played alongside him as well. A real privilege to share a field with, with Vowles. A big hello. I know he'll be tuning in. Big hello to an old mate of mine. And uh, I hope he's doing well. And yeah, I mean, it is a tribute uh, for the the uh, origin colours. The maroon at the bottom replaces the amber. That's in, uh, in recognition of his state of origin appearance as well. So I hope you're doing well, old boy. Scary that that was 25 years ago, good heavens. Anyway, we're underway, and Salford have first touch of the ball and a chance to just impose themselves here. Shane Wright playing in the front row tonight, playing down the middle tonight, taking it up towards that 20-metre mark as uh, Salford look to progress as quickly as they possibly can in these early stages. But at a dummy half, back towards the middle. Cuss now gets it on its way again. Kasselman's defending is decent enough. Burrow skipping it left, Sneed looks about the kick and then just drops the ball inside for the run of Stone. Stone just over the halfway line and this will be the last play in this opening set, so it's the boot of Sneed inevitably that's called into action and underneath this Broadbent catches safely enough and now leads Castleford's first charge for the night. Yep, decent enough defensive set from the Castleford Tigers to get things started. I watched Craig Lingard's uh, press conference yesterday with the uh, the media, and he was saying, you know, he, he is aware and everybody's well aware of the dangers that Mark Snead poses. Uh, so it was about a plan to try and reduce the amount of time he has on the ball, particularly ends of sets. Well, I'm just looking around, and is Max Shane on the field tonight? He was named in that starting 13, but just having a look around, I don't think he's on the field, is he? It is. It's Liam Horn who's uh, playing at dummy half, so whether that is an injury in the warm-up, we know that he was um, having problems with a hamstring injury in the week, so whether something in the warm-up has led him to be withdrawn, we'll try to confirm that in the next minute or so, but uh, he's certainly not there at the start, and that's an awkward kick for Briley to deal with, collected in his own in-goal area, but managing to get back to 10 away. Yeah, but a good couple of opening sets, Salford, and the Castleford Tiger just feeling the way into this game. Decent set, decent kick chase, and Paul McShane uh, spoke to him before the game and all was fine there, so we can only assume that, that something has, uh, has happened in the warm-up, and you're right, he has been struggling with that hamstring, hasn't he? Suffered it last week, and I don't think he trained in the early part of the week, but um, yesterday they were just keeping an eye on things and hoping he was going to be OK, but certainly not there at the start. Salford in possession, here's Burrow, who is there, there at the start. And back he comes to Sneed again, and over the top beyond Richardson, and into the hands here of Lafay, and Lafay is progressing well inside from Westerman, and handing off the attempted tackle from El Zakim. But one play to go, and Salford in decent shape here at the end of it. Sneed's kick is going to be a tester. Seen underneath it with a safe catch. And uh, a decent return as well. Yeah, good, good, work good, from, good work from Senior, but I tell you, I'm not, not overly impressed with that right edge defence from the Tigers. Tim Lafay has got the most tackle breaks in a Salford shirt, and that, that right edge did not look connected. Another good carry here, this time from Sam Wood. Well, we're getting confirmation that Rob Kane is on the bench, that uh, Paul McShane has pulled out because of that injury. Liam Horn starting, as we know, Rob Kane on at the bench. And Lewis Jackson is uh, 18th man. Local lad, isn't he, back here? Looking to uh, build on, on his career so far, Lewis yeah. Jackson, we might see him tonight. And, and I'm, Kane Robb has, has been, um, he spent an awful lot of time as, as 18th man, he gets his chance this evening. I, I actually think he's got a, a lot of potential uh, as a young player. Reminds me a little bit of Dowell Clark, big shoes to fill, I know, uh, lofty reputation, but he, he's a very willing worker and he's a good runner from dummy half as well. So flat pass for Watts to try and carry it on. This is all Horn now, in at dummy half, Westerman taking it forward with purpose again. A cutback on the inside from El Zakeem. And Castleford are finding themselves in the best position they've been in the early stages of this game, with still several tackles to go, and the Papua New Guinean bounces out of dummy half their horn, but he's just going to be held up. Westerman stands and waits. 
It's a pass that bounces into the hands of Richardson. Richardson tries the kick, but it's going to bounce some bobble away from Senior, and Salford find themselves back in possession. Yeah, the attacking play just broke down for a moment or two, an errant pass from dummy half. And then Innes Senior, not on the same wavelength as Danny Richardson. He went to plan B, ball on the boot, but has drifted harmlessly into touch. Bright start by the Tigers, though, and it needed to be as well. They've been good in parts in games so far this season, but they've not been able to stick a, a, a run of minutes together, really, and that's why they are in the table where they are in the table. Well, again, the, the news we're getting down from the touchline is that Paul McShane fell his hamstring tighten at the back end of the warm-up, so precautionary from his point of view. How much he'll be missed remains to be seen. Burrow. It's um, wider still from Briley. Lafay helps it on its way. Over on that far side is North Faluma. He's taken Salford within sight of their opponents. Half. Skipped back to the middle again and cussed. And this time it's Orman Royd. And you have to be high to go high on Orman, Orman Royd. And it is a penalty because of that for the Salford Red Devils. Yeah, really impressed with the way that the, the Red Devils can go play for play as well. They'll shift to the right-hand side of the field and then straight away they're, they're hitting the other channel on the next play. And it's just a, a lazy arm, isn't it, from Eliel Zakim that snakes up and catches Ormond Royd around the head. Penalty to Salford. Another worrying uh, element of that, uh, that defence they've got opened up on the on the left edge now. They're, they're really trying to put pressure on, but the depth with which Salford are playing is causing problems already. So Wood, uh, rather Lafay with that early take. Here's Burrow, looking to organise things again. A little scamper from him and uh, eventually in by Wright. And Wright still pushing hard. Castleford eventually completing the tackle and it's another penalty. Another penalty for Salford. Do they think about goal here? Yes, they do. He's going to go for two. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a free two points, isn't it? We, we were going to make the point at, at, at some point during the game that when Salford score, they tend to go up in sixes, such as the accuracy of Marks needs boot. Um, but if there's a free two, uh, free two points on offer, he'll take those as well. Yeah, and there's just too much in there. And it's Sam Hall that is uh, the culprit on that occasion. Well, if Sneed puts this over, it'll be his 26th successful kick this season. His 32nd successful kick, an unbroken run going back to last year. And he's closing in on an all-time record. Stefan Ratchford holds the Super League all-time record of 41, but Liam Finn and Jamie Ellis in Senior Rugby League are also up on that number. But in Super League, this is the way it stands at the moment. Ratchford on top, Martin, Mason Lino and Henry Paul going back a few years and Mark Sneed will be edging ever closer on the back of this one. Yes, he does. That's kick number 32 and Salford lead here in the early stages by two points to nil. Yeah, and it just shows you how easily you can be punished. Right hand side of the uprights, five metres out, right in front of the referee's eyes. It was, it was naive play from, from Sam Holt. Starts his eighth game and has progressed well through the, through the ranks at the Castleford Tigers, but you know, again, given, given where they are and, and the paucity of attacking football they've played, they can't be offering up points like that. Giving the character of Mark Sneed, I suggest he isn't getting nervous about this kicking record. He'll just keep kicking, and if he misses, it won't bother him. He's that kind of character, isn't he? Just get on with the game, the here and now. But we'll celebrate if he does get to that uh, 41 or even more. Salford at the moment, looking just about in control. And looking to advance again on a field where we say it every time we come it's not long between your turning defense into attack and this is what Salford are trying to do here we're hunted down Sneed moving up into dummy half again this is um, an opportunity for Stone Nenny McDonnell picks up and helps it on its way Cust now they've looked left they're now looking right Watkins put down Quickly played, and off they go with Cust again, who's going to kick for Norfoluma for the corner, and it's out on the full. So, not everybody in Salford Colours has got a magic boot. Yeah, just overcooked that ever so slightly. You know, one thing is, is evident right from the outset is just how prepared Salford are 
to shift the ball any area of the field. They've, this is a mobile squad that the Salford Devils have put together uh, under Paul Rowley. And the aim here, obviously, move, move this considerably larger Castleford pack around the field. I was going to say, it is it is mobile out of necessity, isn't it, Salford? It's not the biggest pack of forwards they've got at their disposal just at the moment. They, they play to their strengths, and it's been remarkably effective so far this season. Horn, now Richardson. Sneed's got him. Burrow lends a helping hand, and Horn is back at dummy half. Things slowing down just a little. Westerman... And now Watts, and Watts puts it back. A little dummy show as uh, Mella edges it towards the halfway line. Horn's moving up there into acting half again. Watts to his right, but it's Westerman. And now they come to Richardson. Richardson with a double pump. Step back on the inside, but again wrapped up by an efficient Salford defence. Up gets Broadbent to play. Last play now. Richardson has to hurry with a kick because uh, the pressure was coming in for Partington and it's caught and Salford start there which is not a bad position but that's the difference you saw in the last cast of a Tigers attack between having a ball player and a runner at fullback when Salford looking to shift it straight off the bat again look at the movement 10 minutes on the clock by the way and the applause you hear is for George Lawler because he wears the number 10 shirt of course and a terrible illness this last week bleeding on the brain and uh, everybody very, very worried about that, but his uh, name has been sung out and there's applause going round the ground as well. And everybody here wishing George all the best. As we said earlier, the news we're getting is that he is making a good recovery. Let's hope that carries on in that manner. In the meantime, Salford are making progress here. Dion Cross back on the inside and Ryan Briley in support for the first try of the night. 11 minutes played and that applause that we heard suddenly becomes all Salford's because they can celebrate. That was a really well-crafted try as well. And again, it comes from this, this willingness for the Salford Devils to shift the ball. And the Castleford Tigers defence are just one step behind. They've come in, but they've not managed to shut down Tim Lafay before he's got the ball away. And then Dion Cross, who's, I think, moved seamlessly from centre to wing has burst up the left-hand flank and then provided Ryan Briley. It's a late offload that starts everything. Ball gets shifted out through the hands of Mark Sneed. That's just not that's just not quick enough from Sim to shut down the pass. Cross rides the tackle, then Briley in support to open the scoring for the visitors. Uh, it's really easy on the eye, isn't it? The way they play, the way they play their attacking rugby, the way they set up, the willingness to play, you know, late, late offload and then a shift off the back of that. And that's just the reactions are not good enough from the Casper Tigers. I was going to say, Casper are going to be disappointed that that wasn't shut down several times before it got into Braley's hands there. Yeah, it's going to be a, a tough night at the office uh, for, for Josh Sim and Josh Hodson on this right-hand edge. As I said, they're up against Salford's leading tackle buster in Tim Lafay. I mean, he's a huge, huge threat and a huge outlet for that man, Mark Sneed, as well, when he's looking across the field for someone to, to pass the ball to. And they're going to have to. They're going to have to improve. I think just a step or two, but they're going to have to improve. Well, there's one thing you can say about Mark Snead with his kicking. He doesn't rush. <laughs> his teammates having a chance to have a chat about what's gone right from them, their point of view so far. And back we go with Snead. If he is keeping a mental count of each success. Up he steps, swings that left boot, that trusty left boot. It's another success. Two out of two tonight. 27 out of 27 for the season and 33 out of 33 Salford Lee. Now it's worth another look at this try isn't it? Take a look at how late this offload is goes into contact ball comes out and then how quickly they move the point of attack and it's just the, the reactions are too slow from the Tigers cross drifts back on the inside then Briley where all good fullback should just up that channel providing an outlet on the inside and that's as, as simple but elegantly played by the Salford Red Devils so Salford back in possession, already looking good, already looking full of bounce, full of confidence. They've had some terrific wins so far this year. St. Helens at St. Helens, the first in, what was it, 44 years, was it? Ending a run there of winning in that town, and they were very frustrated not to beat Wigan, and many observers that night thought they probably should, but they picked up the pieces straight away after that with a victory over Lee last week. And they get a week off next week as well, don't they, Salford? Because they're not involved in the Cup. Other games taking place tonight, of course. 
and Hulkingston Rovers 6-4 early stages against London. That represents a decent start from the Broncos' point of view. Well, another side looking for a first win. Here's Watkins. Now it's Burrow. Sneed. Again, the kick is uh, very, very high, and it's a safe take from Broadbent, who will be pleased with the, the dry weather here tonight. Makes handling a lot better, doesn't it? Yep, it's a good it's a good set after points for the Salford Red Devils as well. A kick for position there. Decent kick chase off the back of it. Second tackle still inside the 20. That's exactly where the Salford Red Devils want them. So Kess again, if they can, through Hodson. New signing, of course. Batley player last year. He's an excellent London player, isn't he, Josh Hodson? So he'll be ch chuffed with that early, early score. From Hulk KR, here comes Innes with a wonderful piece of footwork and then the pace, look at this, and he's going to go all, nearly all the way. Yes, he is. Picks himself up. That is one of the best tries you'll see this year. That took some finishing. That had a bit of everything. Confidence, power and pace. And diving over in the corner, Innes Senior for a very special moment. Yeah, well, the, out Salford, it's Salford. Brilliant spread plays, the, the element of their of their attacking play they've not got right, the execution of that final pass. We've seen them several times this season. Well, I'll tell you what, if you use that as a as a benchmark, the Casaba Tigers could spark their season into life. Take a look at this again. Westerman at the heart of it. And then it's a beautiful cutout ball from Broadbent. In a senior steps inside one, then a couple of fends on a 50-60 meter dash to the line. Briley nearly but not quite. Stops the momentum, but doesn't prevent the try being scored. And there's one thing you can say about Innes Senior. He's a hard worker, but when he gets into some space, there are few people who can match him for pure pace. Really well finished. And it's a nice final fend as well, wasn't it? Just to deflect the incoming Briley down to lower parts of his legs, could shrug out. He's a tall frame, Innes Senior. And the Tigers strike back. Well, I think any winger in Super League would have been pleased with that finish. And Innes Senior is up there as, as one of the, the really good ones in Super League. Richardson with a kick, which uh, could reduce it by another two, and he has. So, suddenly Castleford ignite. Six points to eight, quarter of an hour play. No, I'm going to give some, some credit here to Jack Broadbent. I was just called him a running fullback, but there's a, a very, very decent pass in this passage of play. It's Miller who gets it out, and that's a decent cutout ball from Jack Broadbent. Stepped inside Cade Cuss and then gets into full slight, opens up the legs and outpaces two decent speedsters in that Red Devils cover defence. Once in the backfield, there's few people who'll stop this man. Well done, Innes Senior. Still on loan, isn't he, from Huddersfield? He's not permanent here, I don't think, but obviously a long time at Huddersfield with his brother, Lewis. And here come Castleford with renewed energy. What's taking it in? And they look as though they've got quite a bit of confidence about them now. But Salford will try to respond by reducing this go forward to an absolute minimum. Horn out of dummy half. It's Westerman. Deliberate. Take it forward again. Castleford trying to eat up the metres before they put in a final kick, but four gone, two to go. Horn's looking on the inside, Westerman's there. It's Westerman who takes it and back to uh, Miller, but it goes no further. So one play, and you'd expect a kick here from Miller. Here it comes. Oh, and it's taken a deflection. Partington, now is that seen as played at? No, it's not, it's still the sixth tackle. So they're still in the same position where they need to kick, and Richardson behind the 40 has put it out on the full. We're looking for something spectacular there with a 40-20, but instead it's something a little disastrous because Salford have it back with a full set 40 metres from their opponent's line. Yeah, and the, the Tigers are, are all saying, understandably, that you know, the ball's been played at. Charge down was unsuccessful. And the tackle count not restarted here. Danny Richardson steps one, but then just comes off the side of the boot and into touch, and the Tigers under pressure again. Well, it's a controversial moment. He was certainly advancing towards the ball, wasn't he? But it's not given as played out, and instead, it's Salford who have opportunity. Cust drops it back for Watkins. Watkins angling back. Burrow takes his time. 
to find this position. And out to Sneed. Sneed now to Briley. It's a, a little push from Lafay, who hunts back towards the middle. Watts tries to get a hold. Lafay still going. Bowls it off to Burrow. And along the line they go again to Cost. And here comes Nenny McDonald. McDonald's lost it. And, well, the referee's deciding. I think it was stolen. Two in the tackle. Well, all kinds of things to complain about for Cass fans at the moment, John. Now it was close, I think, wasn't it, that one? Uh, Chris Kendall's determined two in the tackle. I mean, again, you, you know, regardless of what's happened here, oh, blimey, I think they've been oh. hard done by. Yeah. Miller joined, Miller joined late, but, you know, you get to see that again, and you can understand why Casper Tigers fans and players are aggrieved. But just how quickly that went from Lafayette in one centre to the, into the hands of Nene McDonald in the other, that's the danger. Well, the, the Cass fans have seen that on the big screen, and they are not happy, and there is some justification to that. Burrow, Sneed, Partington, and he's lost it, and I don't think the referee's going to give that as a ball steal. It is Castleford who come up with it, and, and a lot of people in this ground would, would consider that justification. Yeah, rugby league karma, and the Tigers again looking to shift first play. Brought in a dummy half again. Yeah, it's just a loose carry, isn't it, from Ollie Partington? Hall, this is Westerman, and now Watts, those two combining, the two very much senior figures right down the middle of the park for the Tigers. Horn again, Richardson dropping it off. El Zaki is Hall. Up and at it straight away. Miller. Oh, and it's a, it's a, a panicked pass because the Sulphur defence was moving up quickly. And it's given an opportunity for North Luma to pick it up. Yeah, wrong decision from Jacob Miller then. Just invited pressure. I think that the setup play was was slow, was laboured, wasn't it? The ball came out the back and then Miller felt that the presence, the pressure in his face. So Salford looking to settle things. Partington. Now Burrow. Sneed again. Braille is chiming in the, from the full-back's position. Lafay using that footwork to try and tantalise and bamboozle that cast defence. But it ain't for bamboozling. Sneed. Partington. Oh, rather, now it's with Cust. And here's Braille. That's a better read. Much better defensive read. Last play. It's Burrow who stands on it. Sneed has to reach a little, but he's uh, put a, a decent kick up there, but it's uh, taken well enough by Sim. He'll be happy to have ball in hands and cast back in control. Yep, Sim takes me another solid kick chase to end another solid set by the Red Devils. Just look at how, when Mark Sneed gets the ball, how late he plays and releases Ryan Briley. That forces the Casper Tigers into late numbering off. And very often with a change in pace, oh dear me. Well, the referee's quickly in there as they're coming together. And they're baying for blood from the terraces. Well, it's a tackle in which Alex Meller gets tipped above the horizontal, so hips, hips and legs go above the horizontal, that's dangerous. And Bull has just put a bit too much on that one. It'll be interesting to see what the referee's comments are here. Funny Yaya while was doing the chatting to the referee, but you would say Burrow is at the heart of that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Let's hear from the referee. Yeah. yeah. He's getting uh, communication with the video referee as well, who will be advising yeah, on what yeah. happens next. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Westerman no, wants to have his word as well. Amir Burrow's called out, Callum Watkins as captain is also called out. Cats fans yeah, will accept only one position. outcome here. With the way he's landed, it's ten minutes in the bin. Yeah. It's a Simbinning. Amir Burrow shown the yellow card. And he's away for ten minutes. Right decision, John? Yeah, I think that's probably fair. He's just, just put too much into that tackle. 
because whatever decision And you I can make, feel though sometimes the weight disappears from the, the, the person you're trying to tackle and you know at that point potentially they're in a vulnerable position. Mel, it's a powerful carry in, isn't it? He's, he's well met, isn't he, by Watkins from you. Funny Yayoa and from the man who's currently about to start a 10 minute spell in the beer, Namir Burra. But yeah, it's, you, 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 can't, you can't put a player in a vulnerable position. There's a duty of care on the defender there for the safety of the ball carrier. Well, Kesser encouraged here. They're still behind by two points, but when Salford led 8 0, you just thought they could be about to break loose. They had that swagger about them, but Kass have dug deep, they've got to score back. And now for the next 10 minutes, they have an extra man on the field as well, as Hall will take it forward. This is Hall. Thought he was starting on the bench tonight, but it's a late call-up. Sammy Kabula, who's on from the interchange bench. Horn again, missing out Westerman, into the hands of Miller. Short and direct, two to go in the set. It's Horn who comes right, and um, Kabula trying to force his way through. He's done well to keep that ball alive. Westerman now crabbing left. Salford's defence is ready and set. And the push from Mella is still going on here, and the ball is stolen away, but I think there were two involved in that tackle. Not at the point of the steal by Stone, but there were two involved a little earlier. And that has given Cast a penalty. Yeah, and you'd be surprised if they didn't level the scores up here, right in front of the sticks. Five metres out. Kicking T is on, but it, there's a, I know there's a, there's a discussion here, they've opted to run it. Party to fall off the tackle, that's why his involvement was, and Kibula has taken it very, very close. This is Horn again. Castleford looking to strike through Horn, but Salford's defence responding quickly. And they needed to. Hall, the big fella at dummy half. Richardson now, Salford out quickly from their line, shutting down all the Tigers' options. Horn again, the places are further at the moment. Terraces are live because the action is good. Horn again, another set of six, another set of six for Cass. Kabula with a short pass, and it's an easy cross for Sam Hall. They open up that tiring Salford defence. And Castleford have the lead, and they have a spirit about them. No surprise that they didn't take the two, but you get a feeling when you're on the field of just where your opposition are at. The Castleford Tigers, obviously, with a bit of momentum and an extra man, and they've made it count, haven't they? It was a really good run to set up the play from uh, Broadbent, who pulled through the tackle, dominated that, and forced the, the, re the repeat set, but it all came from the attempted steal. The one player on at the time of the steal, but... Bunny Yayua had previously been involved in that tackle. And then a couple of plays later, it's Kabula with a short offload and Sam Hall over from close range. And the Tigers take the lead. And I'm sure one man who will be punching the air in delight is, uh, is George Lawler because Sam Hall's the man who's in, in his place tonight. And I'm sure that uh, George would have been hoping for a big game for him. And he's produced a wonderful moment. First try of the season. Yeah, good young kid as well, Sam Hall. He's uh, really developed as a player. And he's had a, a, a couple of really experienced stalwarts, as you said, Dave, to, to learn his craft from. And he's a young lad with a lot of potential, and he's starting to realise it now. So Richardson to add another two, and he has. And at 8 0 down, it didn't look great from Kassifer's point of view. But at 12 8 at the moment, young and old can enjoy what they're seeing in Castleford Colours. Absolutely. It doesn't take much to get this crowd into voice. They've had precious little to cheer about so far this season. It has been a poor start by anybody's standards. But that looked full of confidence, didn't it? Decent tempo. And now it's what of the Salford got in response. Salford 26, Cass 22 when they met earlier this season. If memory serves from that game, Castleford came very close. They scored a, a try late on, didn't they? And were threatening a, a leveller or even a winner in the late stages. So we know there's not too much to choose between these two teams. And so it's proving again tonight. It's Kalula with a step. Can't get the pass away this time. Horn stands and waits. It's Miller looking to uh, just generate a bit more momentum for his side. 
Horn again, Westerman this time, taking it, angling it towards the middle, testing the resolve of those oncoming Salford defenders. Listen to the atmosphere, it's terrific at the moment. Back to Richardson. Just um, looking to pen Salford back as far as they can. Briley looking to bring it out, but good chance. There was a decent kick, you know, because I was watching Briley in his position. He's so fast across the ground, Ryan Briley. Even with the 300-plus games he's got under his belt now, that pace is undimmed. Very, very good positionally. He screamed across to get hold of what was a good kick from Danny Richardson. He's not following up, the winger. Taking on some of the juices down the middle. Well, this time, Vuniyayawa, that's, uh, that's a decent carry from the front forward. Custis here again, he's seen a bit of a gap there, he's seen a bit of a, an opportunity, but the pass is poor. Lost them a bit of ground, can Norfoluma make it up now? Hopkins spinning it back to Sneed, who's just... That's a good kick from Sneed, hitting the ground bouncing it over the head of the defenders and just taking a bit of steam out of Kassavert by pushing them back a yard or two. Yeah, you don't get the break you used to do by putting the ball into touch, but it certainly gives you time to set a defensive line. It's clever how he uses that kick as well, isn't it? Hitting the ground to make sure it bounces up and away. But Kassavert coming back with some fight here. Scramble out of dummy half as well, just causing a sense of concern there. Broadbent with that run. Here's Richardson. But uh, good effort to stop El Zakim. Hodson. Four gone. A couple of plays to go. Richardson with a dummy. Miller knew that he was being advanced on, so just to let the ball bounce, and maybe he should have taken hold of it because it is picked up. By Nenny McDonald. That's the second really good, really good anticipatory read by the Salford, ed, uh, Salford edge defence on that right hand side. And the Castlewood Tigers attack has broken down as a result of it. You're starting to see some gaps open up around the rook now. As the fatigue sets in, we're just about to hit the half hour mark. This, this is opening up a little bit. Cust operating out of dummy half at the moment. Looking around Burrow off the field. Mackey comes to Sneed. Briley again. Thought he had an avenue for himself there, but Salford's defence responds well enough and stops him in his track. It's collected here by Lafay. Lafay searching left, right, then back down the centre. Five to go. One play. Sneed. Boot again. Inevitably, the cute little chip up in the air. The arms are up there. It's back off Salford, so it's still the sixth, and it was a knock-on. But it was directed from Partington to Cust there, I think. And that is why Cass will have it back. Yeah, it's just one man they were aiming for, wasn't it? The big frame of Nene McDonald is great in the air. Ball kicked across the field. I'm still in awe of Mark Sneed. The way he changes the tempo of those plays on the short side, he's gonna, they're going to persist with that. Castleford with hard work to do again to build from deep. But they have a lead, 30 minutes play, 12-8. Suddenly there's confidence about this place. Big blow before we even kicked off with McShane. Ruling himself out with that hamstring injury in the warm-up. Or the exacerbation of the hamstring injury in the warm-up. But Castleford have, have not worried about that because this fella's filling in admirably. Home now. Gets a good pass away, but the drag down tackle. Namo goes down. Now it's switch left. Here's Richardson. Richardson kicking for the corner. It's going to be a second of the night for Innes Senior. Absolutely spectacular. Absolutely brilliant. And Castleford are thriving at the moment. They are bubbling with energy. What a kick from Jake Miller. It was top draw stuff. For once, the Salford Red Devils defence caught on its heels in two minds. Innes Senior's kept his width. Provided an outlet from the kick from the boot of Jacob Miller and he gets his second of the night I'll tell you take a look again. I think Bunny Yayo must have been called offside there Horn streaks through into the backfield Takes the tackle eventually offloads to Namo and then it's a retreat in defense There's no line speed no pressure for once on Jacob Miller
and it's a lovely kick across the top, really well weighted, pinpoint accurate, and in his senior, who must have the longest arms in Super League, gathers it up and crosses to extend the Tigers' lead. This is really positive stuff from the home side. And Miller looks up, assesses the situation, sees a passive defensive line and a willing outlet in his senior. And they go 16 points to eight in front, an unlikely lead before a ball was kicked. Well, they never had it so good in 2024, Cass. They're enjoying this night at the moment. Playing with confidence, playing with verve. And playing like a team who could be breaking their duck in this new campaign. So there'll be a response from Salford, we know that. It's a long way from being done and dusted this game. Richardson, almost in amongst the cheerleaders there when he starts this run up. And wow, brilliant kick. Well, we've extolled the vir virtues of the boots of Mark Sneed, but hats off to Danny Richardson. That's three out of three in an 18 8 lead. Now the radar's on for Richardson tonight. They take another look at this brilliant piece of summing up by Jacob Miller. And then right on the fingertips, in his senior crosses for his second of the night and open up a 10 point lead over the Red Devils. Well, Burroughs back on the field for Salford and Shorrocks is on as well. So a couple of changes from Salford's point of view, and they need to change things around at the moment, don't they? They need to stem this cast enthusiasm. Well, it's been a costly 10 minutes, hasn't it, for the visitors? Big contact, heavy contact. Served his time in the Simbin. So he'll be expected to put in a bit of harder work here, Amir Burrow. Horn. Well, again, they're flying forward here. Wood gets it away. It's uh, taken on more than a stride or two by Miller. He's almost at the halfway line. Horn's waiting patiently to get things going again. Salford working hard here to stop this momentum. It's with Richardson and now Westerman. And Richardson eventually just holding on to that. Broadbent. Last play. Richardson sticking it up in the air. Chases on, down it comes, not too threatening from Salford, and Briley reads it well. Move Saw that the offload was coming there and nipped in cheekily to have it back for Salford. No, super smart from Ryan Briley, all the experience in the world there. You could see just from the body shape of Alex Miller, I think it was, that the ball was going to be pushed back, recycled back, and put himself in the way. But this is a good period, real purple patch for the Tigers. It's a good game, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a bubbly game, it's a lively game. And we've got an atmosphere to match as well. This is uh, McDonald. Gets up and plays it. Burrow. And now Sneed. And Sneed across. And Lafay. Left foot step. Brushing off a couple of defenders. Searching back towards the middle. Funiyawa was in there, but it's given away instead to Northaluma, who keeps it alive. They're pushing through Watkins, who's put down 12 out. And Salford fancy a response here. They really do. Sneed again with a kick towards the corner. Up go the abs. Oh, brilliant take. Absolutely brilliant take on that right hand side for Josh Sim. Not needed to be as well because that was a try scoring opportunity. Boyd have lit the fuse. These two sides, this has really stepped up a notch in the last couple of minutes. That's a fantastic battle here we're watching at the moment. You've chosen wisely if you're staying with us tonight because this is a great game. A flick that eventually is kept in possession. Westerman driving it, going through their tackles. Salford pressing on the energy. Hulk KR 26, London 4. Hulk KR will feel that that is a much more balanced scoreline than we saw a little earlier. That's one side. London have yet to win this season. Castleford, you wouldn't believe that they are still on that naught at the bottom, the way they're playing here tonight so far. Briley brings it back for Salford and has seen a bit of a gap and there was just an ankle tap in there from Nama. Otherwise, he was away. Well, that's the reward for a brilliant defensive set. When you look at that, the, the metres they restricted the Tigers to, they are right on the attack now. Surge again. It's um, left to Sneed. Sneed with a, the short pass once more. Shorrocks down. Ten to go, but three tackles left. Burrow. 
options left. Stone's out there, but he's coming back towards the middle and Sneed. And Sneed along to Croft now. Croft gets it to Watkins. Watkins, in athletic fashion, runs onto that, but he's going to be held onto by Sam Ward and dragged back. Dragged back to the 10. Great response from the Tigers' defence. Croft to Sneed. Sneed again, a chip and a chase. But Sims over there and just about gets enough on that. My goodness. My goodness, his heart would have been in his mouth. But it is a drop out underneath the sticks. Well, I don't know what size his shoes are, his boots are, but blimey, he's just caught enough of the ball there to direct it out of harm's way. Now, it's another pinpoint accurate kick from Mark Sneed. The chase probably not up to Salford standards. And Sim just gets enough on that. Oh, he'd have looked around with panic there momentarily, wouldn't he? But still 18-8. And the dropout has gone out on the full. Was there Richardson? I think it was. And that is a huge mistake. You could see what he was going for and had it come off brilliant, but it didn't. That's the problem. So accurate off the tee and a couple of mistakes. Kicking from hand. Yeah, you're right there. You know what he's gone for. It's just not come off and it puts the Tigers under pressure. And here comes Sneed, who puts it back to Briley. Quick hands from him. And they're over in the corner. Referee is happy with that. Tim Lafay on the end of some very smart Salford play. And they quickly quelled this big atmosphere with a smashing score. Oh, this is turning into a cracking match. That was surgical from the Red Devils. One play gone. Tim Lafay's second try of the season. He's been invaluable for them since he joined the club. We take a look. First of all, the, the error. And again, you'd, you'd maybe forgive that because you know what the aim is there. And Shorrocks straight into an attacking setup, Briley into space, and then it's just a simple catch and pass. That was precise as it gets. And a timely score as well for the Red Devils. You're right, Dave, he does take his time with, his, with adding the extra two. Why not? Uh. Mark Sneed all the time in the world. And he's not been done any favours here for a man who's... Um, such a successful run. This is one of the more difficult kicks in that run, you'd imagine. It's about five metres in from the touchline. You'd still back him to kick this. We shall see. Tidying yeah. up the tailoring, socks and shirt, yeah, everything where it needs to be. It's the wrong side of the field for a left-footed kicker, but I, I'm, I'm maybe stretching things a little bit when we're talking about somebody of the calibre of Mark Sneed. Settles again, Kess fans doing their level best to try and put him off here. Sneed. Rocks back. Strokes it. Well, well I don't think he's ever going to miss again. The way he's kicking the ball, he will, but my goodness, three out of three tonight. And that is success 34. Consecutive run now. You know, we said, didn't we, when they go up, they go up in sixes. I love this. I love how quickly they fall into shape. First play and they just catch the Tigers napping. Overloaded that left-hand edge, and they are prepared to play on any play from anywhere in the field, and that is a, a real conundrum when you're used to ebbs and flows and battles for position and territory. You face a side that, that can press the button from anywhere on the field. 18-14 is uh, the scoreline, by the way. I think our scoreline there is, is wrong. 18-14 for Castleford. Salford back in possession. And a chance for Salford to come forward again in what is going to be just about the last play of this first half. Maybe there's time for one more. There will be. Burrows in there. Burrow. Watkins on that far side. Can't keep it alive. Yes, he can. Nolfaloom is involved. They want to keep it going here, but they won't take too many gambles because that hooter has sounded. So, in the end, the tackle is completed on Shorrox. And what a first half we've just seen, John Wells. Outstanding from both sides. It's the best half of rugby that the Castlewood Tigers have played. The Salford Red Devils, well, we, we've become accustomed to their style of play and the standards they've set themselves. The Tigers ahead on the scoreboard, and they had a real purple patch, didn't they? I think they've really enjoyed this 40. Castleford 18, Salford 14, the half-time score. It has been terrific so far, and we'll have all the analysis and looking back on that first half 
very shortly. But the crowd here are plenty to talk about. And that's one of the main talking points of that first half. That wonderful score by Josh Sim. We'll be looking back at that and plenty more to come very shortly. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. The breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. And I'm feeling good. The competition on everybody's mind, Augusta, off next Thursday. And then all four days live from glorious Augusta. Some trips are even better than Casper Tigers on a Friday night, I tell you. That is one to look forward to. Four days of what should be fantastic golf. Uh, latest scores tonight. It is a big night of uh, Super League, Betfred Super League here tonight. This game here, of course, but elsewhere, two important matches uh, that are catching our eye here on Sky Sports. Warrington leading 16-14, as you can see, at Leeds. And uh, Hulkingston Rovers 18, London 14 is um, also a latest score. Sure about that. I think it might be. I think we might have mixed a couple of scores there up. I think Hulk KR 40, London 4. I think that is the, uh, the half-time score because it is, of course, 18-14 here. Half-time scoreboard for us. Just confirmation that uh, it is 18-14 in favour of the Cast Tigers against the Salford Red Devils. And it's been a first half, John Wells, that's been uh, been one to relish, really, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's been a fantastic half. Quality on both sides. The first points of the game came from the boot of Mark Sneed. The first try of the game came from the visitors as well. Ryan Briley on 11 minutes, late offload midfield, sets up uh, a Salford Red Devils that can really shift in to attacking shape, move the point of the attack. Dion Cross rides a couple of tackles and Ryan Briley opens the scoring. That made it 8-0 with Sneed's conversion, but it's this that's troubled the Tigers. It's just that, that shift in the point of the attack, second phase play. Dion Cross talking to Paul Rowley before the game, made himself undroppable with his performances. Ryan Briley on the end. Then came a wonder play from Innes Senior. He takes a ball deep in his own half from... Broadbent and then steps inside, beats a couple of men. There's a late fen there on Briley as well, which was really enabled him to pull out the tackle and score the try. You get a better view of it from this angle. Once he's into some space, there's your first fen, your second fen, and then this on Briley just to push the body down and clear the way for his uh, first score on 15 minutes. Then came, I think, the pivotal point in the first 40 minutes. Amir Burra sent to the Sinbin for 10 minutes, and it was a, a costly 10 minutes. It cost the visitors 12 points because almost immediately Sam Hall from close range opened up a four-point lead. Smart piece of offload play from Sami Kabula. And then Ines Senior with his second, again from deep in their own half. The break made up upfield from Liam Horn. And then uh, across to Sylvester Namo. And then since we're talking golf terminology, it was Jacob Miller with a pitching wedge, wasn't it? To the edge. And Ines Senior grabbed his second. 18 points to eight. Salford weren't done though, were they? They finished off the scoring late on in that first half in what's been a really high quality first half, direct from the tap, through the hands. And if there's a if there's a question mark still, it's on the, the, the responsiveness of this Casava Tigers edge defense, both sides. I think they've been caught out too easily at times, Dave. Well, there are the stats from the, uh, the first half. 18-14, of course, the scoreline. 
And the stats will tell you a little bit more about the story of that first half, and there's not a lot to choose between them, is there, which I think you would have expected. No, two teams playing well, and you, know, you look at the completion rates there, 86 and 85%. You know, these are sides that respect in the football, uh, trying their best to, to play position and territory. Well, we're looking forward to what should be a cracking second half because the first half has been absolutely cracking. It certainly has. We cannot wait for more of this kind of stuff. Spectacular tries, some talking points, a little bit of controversy, and we still don't know who the winner is going to be. So join us very shortly. Well, lots of uh, fantastic, fantastic rugby league stuff going on this season, of course, not just in the Northern Hemisphere, but down south as well in Australasia. The Raiders against the Eels is our next offering, 9.15 a.m. on Sunday morning, Sky Sports Arena. We've uh, been watching some good Super League stuff of late as well. Two more games this weekend. Tomorrow afternoon, it's Hull FC against Huddersfield, 3 o'clock, an action and main event. And then the big one, Catalan against St. Helens, the big one this weekend on action and main event at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Three matches tonight, the one that we're watching here, but a reminder that um, in the other two games that are taking place, some, uh, some really interesting half-time stuff there. Leeds 4, Warrington 16, and Hull KR 40, London 4, which is a, a, a very bruising half-time score from uh, London's point of view. Cassifer, though, leading by 18 points to 14 in this one, like London, looking for that first win, but you'd rather guess that they've got a better chance of getting that tonight than the Broncos. The Tigers with three tries, including those two for senior, leading 18-14, Briley and Lafay, and three goals apiece for Richardson and Sneed. And there's very little to choose between these two sides, John Wells. I'll tell you what I will say. I, the Cassifer Tigers are... They're in front. I feel against the, the try scoring ability of the Software Devils. I think they're going to have to cross for another couple of scores, the Casper Tigers. Uh, I think, they, you know, as well as defend, uh, as defend well, they, 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 they can't shut up shop here. They need to remain positive. I think they've had the best half of the season. I thought there were there were signs in the first half against Leeds, uh, but I think they've executed a hell of a lot better this evening. Yeah, they've, uh, they've, they've put some points on tonight. They've not always been able to do that, have they? 22, I think, is the most they've scored so far in the league this season, which was against Salford, of course, when they ended up losing 26-22, but only four against Wigan, only six against Leeds, the 14 against Catalan, eight against Huddersfield, eight against Warrington. Scoring points has been at a premium, but tonight, well, they've given us three terrific tries, but Salford... Likewise, uh, capable of striking here. Bit of a hold up. Referees, um, I think. I think we uh, touch judge needed a bit of technical attention before we can start this second half. Everybody's wired up these days. Everybody can hear each other, so have to make sure the technicals work, and they do. So we're underway. Second half. Sneed with a big kick up in the air right from the start. Castleford will get first touch of the ball. Sylvester Namu will drive it in. And here we go, John Wells. Looking forward to this now. Yeah, absolutely. It was a cracking first 40 minutes, wasn't it? Some real enterprise shown by both sides. Strap in if you're at home. Don't switch over. I think this has got all the makings of a 79-80 of a minute game. And if you are switching us on belatedly, uh, let me tell you that Paul McShay pulled out before the game began. A, a hamstring tightening in the warm-up, so that has ruled him out, which is why Liam Horn is operating out of dummy half at the moment. He's done big minutes, hasn't he? I mean, Kane Robb's there on the bench, but Horn at the moment has been on for every second of the match, and he's been working hard from that position, as he does again. Yeah, he's had a lot of success around the, around the rook area. We know he's fast out the rook, that first two or three metres. Good first set as well for the Tigers. The ball's lofted, good kick chase. Cross underneath it, immediately caught up with by those Castleford chasers. So, Salford having to start. So, we're, we're, we're being told that Liam Watts has been off for a head injury assessment and he has failed at that HIA, so that, that will be a concern for Cass now. Yeah, it'll have a knock-on effect. Sylvester Namo, Sama Kabula, their minutes will have to increase more than, more than probably Craig Lingard would have scheduled, but they are capable. 
It's another senior character down the middle that is missing now in the shape of Watts. Burrow gets over there, but he was slow to get there, which gave the defensive the defensive team the chance to get in, and Hodgson smartly in there. That was a sixth player. That was sloppy from Salford. Yeah, it was, not just to get in on the tackle as well, but to prevent any form of offload, any attempt to offload. And it's a good starting point for the Tigers. Fueled again with a confidence that might have been lacking earlier in the season. Another set of six. Not that it's too damaging, because that was only the first on that carry of Sim. It's brought then. Up to that halfway line, Horn looking left. Here comes Namo, Sylvester Namo with a drive. Horn again having a look left where Richardson is lurking. There's bigger men in the middle, but it's Richardson, uh, sorry, Miller who brings it in here. Miller back to Wood. Now Horn. And um, soft hands, but it's a poor pass that might still know it well. It was forward. But um, Sami Kabula looking to offload quickly there, but ill advised. Yeah, it ended up being a bit loose. I think Sami Kabula has decided he's passing that before he's caught it. And you've got to read and assess what's going on. Yeah, he's already decided what he's doing, and the ball's gone astray, and the set comes to nothing. It'd be frustrating because I think they started the second half how, how they played large parts of the first, and that was with a great deal of positivity, some very aggressive running lines, and a fair bit of success off the back of that. He's another young fella, isn't he, relatively speaking, Sammy Kabula. He was uh, with Craig Lingard at Batley last year, wasn't he? Oh, and here's a gap created, and suddenly Salford find themselves pushing through, and Nenny MacDonald will go all the way to score. Early stages of this second half, and Nenny MacDonald with a terrific try that brings us all level again, and what a way for the second period to begin. Well, there's a warning, warning shot there, isn't there, for the Casava Tigers. Don't fall in love with yourselves. Because, as we've been saying, this Salford side, the way they play, the licence they are given by their coach, they will go from anywhere at any time. This is just outside their own 20. And then McDonald into some space again. You have to look at that a little too easy. Outpaces the cover defence of Miller and crosses just... 10 metres to the right of the uprights. It's a lovely ball, wasn't it, from Kay Cust. And McDonald is a big frame, but he can move as well. Many remember him in a Leeds Rhino shirt last year. Now plies his trade at Red Devils. Well, he scored more tries for Salford now than he did for Leeds last year. And a word for Nenny McDonald as well, because he's been uh, observing a fast because of Ramadan. And um, that was dusk broke tonight, I think four minutes before kickoff. So Nanny McDonald was able to eat for the first time tonight, just four minutes before kickoff. And they said, Paul Rowley, the coach, said they've got a, a chocolate mouse and a jelly bean ready for him. And, <laughs> and that he, was his feast. And I'm sure he's taken on more energy at half time. And as well. look, that, it cannot be undersold that just how difficult it is in a modern game for, for, for athletes the, the insufficiently fueled essentially for. for a, you know, a sport that demands as much as it does as rugby league. So huge credit. And I know there's been an awful lot of talk, hasn't there, about introducing uh, breaks to acknowledge uh, people's rights to observe Ramadan and not not necessarily unduly affect them. There's a few players in Super League who've been going through this, something similar. So here we go, another chapter in Mark Sneed's incredible kicking story, and over it goes again. 35 on the bounce now for Sneed, and it is an edge of a lead for Salford by 20 points to 18. Yeah, they retake the lead for the second time in the game, but uh, just um, you're in awe sometimes, just their willingness to play, and that's this isn't rolling the dice, this is well positioned, well executed, and then again, when in a little bit of space, they have got the talent in this on this roster to exploit you. What's that do to Casper's psyche to concede so early in this second half, do you reckon? just reminds them that they're going to be in a game and they're going to be in this game for a long time. Great response, though, first tackle. Well, some energy involved in that defensive effort wasn't there, and that's followed up by another one. So far, they're going to have a tough time getting out of their own 20 here. Yeah, and it's the response they need as well, because, you know, I said that the Red Devils are not going away. This is a team that can play for 80. Well, they look for the edges. It's a typical Salford thing. They might look to be in trouble, but they know that they can find the fringes. Taken on again by Meller. On for the interchange bench. Cust 
bounces into Miller's shoulder. Miller scooping it back to the middle. Sneed with a kick. Taken easily enough by Ennis Senior. And Senior brings it back. And uh, Miller is there to make the tackle. Well, I think the Tigers are just doing enough, you know, to Mark Sneed, because for all the world that looked like that was set up for a big spiralled special from, from Mark Sneed. I think he's just feeling enough heat at the moment that he's reverting to traditional kicking style and, you know, trying to pin the Tigers in the corner. But I'll tell you what, you've got to be pinpoint perfect, don't you, to get over the head of Innes Senior. Got two Mellers and a Miller on the field at the moment. Oh, we're done. That's helpful, isn't oh, we're it? We're done. <laughs> so, from deep, Castleford back through Martin. Martin scrambling to his knees, wants to play it quickly. Here it comes to Miller. His kick is high and searching. Briley has to change direction a time or two, but safely taken. Seen him do more of that this season, bringing the ball out himself, Ryan Briley. He very often looks for wingers to help him out there, doesn't he? I think there's an acknowledgement that this three quarter line does an awful lot of work, anyway, as you're seeing now. You know, the tackle breaks from Lafayette McDonald, the meters from North Aluma, from Dion Cross, from Ethan Ryan when he played. It's a good carry, this is a good carry. Oh, oh and it's an offload as well, into the hands of Meller. And, and it still goes, Meller again, but um, close down on right. Well, they travel at a distance on that play. One way or another. They're half-breaking, they're fully breaking as Shorrox looks for what kind of support he's got. Nobody in range for the pass, but then the offload to Briley, and Briley will finish. And that is such a typical Salford try. Opportunities taken, opportunities searched for, and it ends with Briley crossing for the second time in this game. And two quick-fire tries at the start of the second half for the Red Devils. Oh, and huge credit to Shorrox here. I think there was a, a temptation, wasn't there, to try and pass a little bit earlier, and he recognised that Casava Tigers defenders had done enough to scramble to get in between the obvious outlets, so he's uh, committed to take the tackle, and then Ryan Briley has popped up out of nowhere in support. You take a look at Briley's starting position here, far left of your screen now, just following the play, he's had to make up an awful lot of ground, but I think this is super smart. If there's nothing on, take the tackle, he stands up, and then Ryan Briley appears on the scene. Oh, it's outstanding stuff. Double quick-fire strike from the Red Devils. And the initial pass from Partington was brilliant, put Shorrox in space. I think this is super smart. Just waits, waits, holds, patient, and Briley gets his double. There were several points in that break when if you had taken a still photograph and said who scores the try... It would never have been Ryan Briley. You would not have picked Ryan Briley. Well, that just goes to show you again, we talked about how quickly he moved across the ground to, to gather up kicks and, and pouch, uh, pouch kicks. Ah, he's, a, he's a brilliant mover, really good athlete, vastly experienced, and I think he's got better and better as he's got older. Started here, of course, didn't he, at Castleford? Many, many years ago, Ryan Briley. Did he play one game? I don't think he made any appearances before he went to Lee. I think he made his senior debut at Lee. I think it was Paul Rowley who gave him his senior debut at Lee as well. Coached him at Toronto. And 300 odd, 302 games later. Yeah. So here we go again. It's a story as old as time. Mark Sneed's kicking prowess. Is this another one closer? Or does he miss? Sends it well, kicks it well. Oh, he's missed one. Mark Sneed's missed one. So that is the end of the run. It finishes on 35. No doubt it'll start again with his next kick attempt, but it was a castle of fans who enjoyed chanting his name there. I've just heard the graphics department's head hit the desk. I think they were looking forward to updating that and see, see the, uh, the name of Mark Snead climb up that list. Sorry, guys. Well, it's complicated trying to keep track of the number of, many, of how many goals he's scored, so it makes some life simpler. But Salford are back with it, and those two quick fire tries, have they extinguished the flame of the Tigers, or can they reignite here in front of their passionate home fans? Watkins taken by Hall. Meller out of dummy half. Swung left again. Sneed oh, gets it hands. into the hands of Lafay, who's travelling 
with some intent now. Inside that Castleford half, he beats a couple of men twice there, I think, before eventually he stopped. Half an hour to play, is it swinging Salford's way inexorably? They're looking for a third unanswered score in this second half, the juggle. But eventually, McDonald, no, he has knocked on, touch judge on the near side, helping out the referee in juggling and looking for the offload. He has knocked on. Yeah, all it needs, it doesn't need to hit the floor to be able to knock on it, just needs to hit an opposition shirt, which is uh, what the referees have adjudged. Again, I, I tell you what, warning signs here galore for the Tigers. Mr. Salford's side here is going to throw it around. They don't care. They're going to back themselves. They've got the ability. It's an attempted offload that, in the opinion of the referee, has, has touched Sam Wood in that process. Now, it's probably a 50 50 shot. But I'll tell you what, Tim Laffer had a moment, didn't he, about a minute ago? Blimey. Yeah. Caught a ball for his bootlaces, then it'd be about 17 players on that left edge. Such a dangerous attacking player. So Castleford's, Castleford's chance to return with a bit of interest here. Westerman just plunging inside the Salford half. Miller, no look pass. We say that every single game. It's aggressive defence from the, from the Red Devils. They got right up in Miller's eye line there. We see that Kane Rod is on the field as well now. In that dummy half position. And again, again, Dave, really aggressive defence on the edge. He's snuffing it out. Rob goes right, and he's got Westerman there with him as well. And a big breaking, looming run. The flicked off there from El Zakim, but it's got to ground. What a chance. Well, it's a try-saving effort. It's not... It, I don't think this gets credited as a tackle, but nonetheless, this is a try-saving effort from Ryan Briley. He's bobbed up with two tries. This is just as valuable. He just does enough here on Eli Al-Kazim to put him off his stride. As I said, he won't get, he won't get credit as a tackle. In fact, it'll get credited as a missed tackle, but it saved a certain try. stays advantage Salford but we've seen enough in this game to know that there are swings potential swings still to come in the final 27 minutes two sides who've uh, met fire with fire plenty of passion out there plenty of passion on the terraces as well no Faluma Mella step back on the inside from uh, Shorrox has to take the tackle. Mella comes up again. Cust was furious. Cust wanted that pass, but Mella thought there was a better route for himself down that left-hand side. Now it's with Sneed. Oh, it's another high one. Big, big high one. That's going to take some dealing with. Briley got a touch on it. Cust will finish it, but there's inevitably a question here. Was that a broad bent touch? Was it a Salford knock-on? Let's hear from the video referee. It's tackle five. I have no try. Just check that Brewer loses the ball in the air into the tackle for my face. So it's tackle five. We have an on field decision of no try. It comes from a kick, so we'll check on side offside first. So we'll pause this on the foot. So we pause it on the foot. Mallory's offside at the kick and. So is Partington, he's got to have both feet behind the kick ball, and at this point he doesn't. So we'll go forward here. So first of all, are they ever placed on side? So Sneed is the kicker. So Partington is placed on side, and so is Mella. So now we're going into the catch. So now everybody's on side, we're going into the catch. So. The live call is that Breeley has touched that ball first. So we will, on that angle, we can't see whether it's Breeley's hand that it touches. So this will help us. So the ball has touched Breeley into the Castleford player. Thank you. I have a decision. One is going to be ruled out. Castleford can breathe a sigh of relief. They'll get the ball back as well, I think. Decision bending, no try. No, no try. try. No arguments with that, I don't think. No, it wasn't a clean catch, was it, from Ryan Briley? Video referees had a look at that. 
a judge that the first the first contact was Briley into Broadbent's arm, and you, you'd probably say, yeah, I'd agree with that. Cade Cuss wasn't hanging around, was he? And neither the Castlewood Tigers straight back into the work. But a bit of right to be made out of a couple of wrongs at the start of this second half from Castlewood's point of view. Miller. Miller moves out of the way. Rob gets in there instead. Here comes Wood, Sam Wood. Now Rob quickly gathering it up and a little scuttle forward again. Defensive effort coming in is, um, is good enough from Mella. Broadbent back to Richardson, it's charged down. I think uh, Broadbent's favourite to get there he is. And he almost squeezes out of those chasers and it's been lost. Two knock-ons. Referee is going to go which way? Salford's, Salford's way. They get it back here. Castleford are just having a few problems at the start of this second period. Oh, it's Castleford's ball. Castleford's ball, I do apologise. Yeah, he's taken advice, taken advice from his touch judge and he's given possession to the Tigers. Kick charge down, it's off the back of Shorrocks, isn't it? Salford were celebrating that they'd got the ball, but as you said, the touch judge intervening. Just a word on this this Salford Red Devils outfit. In in large part, this is this these are individuals who've been let go by other sides, have been surplus to requirement at other sides. And David Norfoluma, case in point, was, was made available in January this year when he realised he wasn't going to get a, a, an, an NRL deal. And Paul Rowley and his men have moulded these individuals into some team. They are so good to watch. Here's Martin. The thing as well to note is that Salford's wins, four wins out of six in the league, have all been hard-earned. They've not, they've not had a, a runaway win in any of them. So they're used to this battle, aren't they? They're used to being involved in a game like this right through to the 80th minute, which will have hardened them for this night. Oh, tonight. absolutely. They're, they're going nowhere, and the Tigers are going to have to respond now. They're going to have to step up a gear of their own. Rob spins it out. Miller puts it back. Bobbed over the top. Here's Senior. We know about his pace. He's off again. Cuts back on the inside. Big fan. There's no stopping him. That is a hat-trick try, and that is an absolutely stunning hat-trick he's scored tonight. Wing play at its very best. He's a monster, he's a machine, he's a mover, and he's put Castleford right back in it. Well, he's got ramrods for arms as senior. He must have fended three people in the run for his hat-trick. He's sixth in Super League this season. And for once, the Red Devils' right-edge defence, just not as aggressive as we'd seen it previously. Just, high, just, just drifting, sitting between, coming in and sitting off. And Senior does not need a second invitation. That's a brilliant fend on McDonald. That's a brilliant hat-trick try. They're just allowed to play the Tigers. It's the ball over the top to Senior, and he shows Shorrocks a clean pair of heels, and that's a brilliant fend. Stiff arm fend right into the sternum of Nene McDonald. And we said the Castle of Tigers had to go up a gear. Well, in his senior has clicked up a gear there. And this year we are set up for a grandstand finish. He's no right to score here, has he? You know, so many times his path seemed blocked, and yet he finds a way. First try was special, third try was special, second try was quite spectacular as well, wasn't it? It's quite a collector's item, his hat-trick tonight. But he might not have finished there. Richardson puts this over, we're all square again, John. No, I mean, the, the game deserves it, the fans deserve it. I think both sides have played their part. Visitors have come to play. Tigers have shown some resilience and some enterprise. And Richardson remains perfect from the boot. Well, he's starting a bit of a run. Four out of four now. 24 points apiece. And an outstanding try from Innes Senior has given us this position. Yeah, and the Tigers have taken advantage of, uh, of a defence that just hasn't committed for, the, I think, the first time in the game. They've not shown that urgency on the edges. And once you get this man to the back, he's, he's basically arms and legs, isn't he? With a heartbeat. Boy, you wouldn't like to tackle him, would you? Well, at the moment, nobody can. 
Restart, Cast back in possession. Where's this going? With 20 minutes and a bit to play, where is this going? It's one of those matches you absolutely relish. It really is. Well, it's going, for all money, it's going to 80 minutes, isn't it? Might go beyond. Might be a golden point tonight, John. Might be the first of the season. I don't think we've had a golden point, have we, so far? But we might be heading that way. Rob, a dummy half. Miller down the left-hand side, but now Rob's taking his turn to dodge and weave and getting things moving again. And this is brilliant again. This is Brad Martin. Martin trying to hold up Wiley. Martin will bounce over. It's another super cast try. It's raining. Glorious moments for the Tigers now. They're back in the lead again. Wow, what a try. What a try from Brad Martin. Another young kid who's had to bide his time, work his way through the academy. Put up with the ignominy of being left on the sidelines. Playing reserve grade. Gets his chance, gets his first try. And I tell you what, what a score that was. Kane Rob out of dummy half. Has a peek inside, feels the heat from Watkins, and from the halfway line, as a front rower, he'll remember that until the day he hangs up his boots. What a try. Well, Liam Watts ruled out at half-time with a head injury assessment failure. Paul McShane ruled out before the game because of the hamstring problem. And it's almost Paul who and Liam who at the moment because... The hooker, the young hooker off the bench playing his part, and the young prop forward doing his job as well. Yeah, these More are, than his job. Th these are young kids who've been in around the first team for some time, and they've travelled over as, as non-playing players to away games. They've done the extra sessions. They've had the conditioning sessions after the game's finished. As I said, they've got so close on so many occasions. They now get their opportunities, and, and that in video form is what it looks like when people say when you get your opportunity take it oh sensational well i don't think there's been an atmosphere like this at the jungle for a long long time certainly not this season i think they've only scored 18 points in the three matches here so far this season might not even be that many but tonight they've already scored 28 make that 30 because richardson's boot is golden 24 for salford 30 now for Cast Tigers. It's another twist, it's another turn on a night that has given us thrills and spills from the start. And the best news is, there's still a quarter of this game to go. Oh, I'll tell you what, if you found us by accident or found us late, stay with us, because there's some more twists in this game yet. Well, we've, we've seen nominations for tries of the season here tonight. There's been so many moments, so many talking points. And there's still 19 huge minutes to go. Is this going to be the night that Craig Lingard gets his first win as Castleford coach in the Super League? Or does Salford respond again? We shall see. Rob out. Richardson pops it back on the inside again. There's certainly no lack of effort on either side at the moment. Rob now goes. Plenty of confidence. Westerman, off his fingertips, keeps the ball under control trying to urge himself towards that halfway line one play to go Rob inside Richardson kicks it very very high Dion Cross underneath it has dropped it you could see it just dropped ahead of him he didn't quite read the flight just a little bit of a fade at the last moment and Castleford are celebrating this because he no, they know it sets them up again here well, and it was an A1 kick chase as well Dion Cross He's just misjudged the flight of the ball. It came in hot, didn't it? It's a monster from the boot of Danny Richardson. And that came in fast. It got in real big in the face of Dion Cross. And the Tigers set up midfield from a scrum. What a job here now for Salford. They've got to quell this furious onslaught that is coming their way pouring down off the terraces here at the jungle and embodied by those 13 on the field in cast colours tonight a little step by miller things open up momentarily and then close it again and norman Royd is just back on from the interchange bench is there to make the tackle rob oh he's hurt here he's hurt here miller well i think sulfur players are gesticulating suggesting he might be making something of this that he shouldn't be 
but he stayed down. Jacob Miller. Yeah, there was a big gap that opened up with that initial step, wasn't it? The cover coming across from the scrum. It was closed pretty quickly. And we're just waiting to, for the, the checks, the precautionary checks to be completed by the, the Tigers medical team. He's OK. Thumbs up. No further look. They do have the green card option, but not used. That's a big game to look forward to tomorrow. Double header tomorrow, of course. Catalan St Helens is going to be huge. But I tell you what, if it's as good as this game, if either of those two games tomorrow are as good as this, we'll certainly enjoy them. Cass come again. Rob to Westerman. Looking for the offload out of the back was Mella. Kane Rob moves up. Westerman's there to receive. And again, Salford hanging on literally at the moment in a game where they've looked really good at times, but at the moment are on the back foot. Another set of six, another set of six. Cass in their pomp at the moment. It's down the blind side by Rob. It's uh, not quite picked up by Richardson. Two knock ons. So it'll be Cass who get it back here. Yeah, and the Tigers keeping the pressure on. If the coach could get on the field now, I'd be saying, calm down, boys, calm down. We've drilled this area of the field, we've drilled our attacking plays. It's just an arm snaked out from Joe Mellor that's knocked the ball, the pass down from Kane Robb. The Tigers will go again with a fresh set of six. It's a crucial, crucial 60 seconds in the game for both sides. Richardson to feet, Robb picks out, goes to that right-hand side. Oh, it's a... It's a loose pass, and it's um, taken offside by Salford. Salford were offside. Well, there's a bit of luck from Castleford's point of view. Yeah, the Tigers just held it in the bottom of the scrum, didn't they? Just for a half a second or so. Kick for goal here, surely. Surely they kick for goal here. Yes, it's the decision they've taken. Yeah, Tim Lafay trying to get up out of the defensive line as quickly as possible. He's just jumped the gun ever so slightly. The Tigers will take the two. And we started the evening talking about Mark Sneed's sensational kicking from the tee. Well, I think we may end tonight talking about his opposite number, Danny Richardson. He's been flawless. You know what you've done there, don't you? You know what you've done there. You might have gone early on that one. I hope for your sake he kicks this. Otherwise, you'll be to blame. Richardson. Under a little bit of pressure now to put this one over. If he does put it over, it's an eight-point lead, two scores ahead. So it's a huge one, especially as time is ticking by, although there are still 40 minutes to go. Here he comes, Richardson, and he has... Never in doubt. ...provoked the flags to be raised, six out of six, 32 points to 24. Who saw this coming before the night began? Oh, such an enjoyable game. Look, I kind of knew what, what, what to expect from the Sulphur Red Devils. I've seen them enough and knew what they were capable of. The Tigers, well, this is a real marked step forward from them. Sneed with a restart, Miller with a catch. Edged forward again by Westerman. Pushed back, redoubtably, by those three Sulphur defenders. This is where Sulphur have to dig deep. Big set in defence from their point of view to try and quell this Castleford storm. A Tigers tornado at the moment. But can Salford find a way? Have to score twice now, of course. Rob picks up and goes. He's had a few scampers tonight, hasn't he, since he's been on? A little bit of brightness. Miller back on again to Miller, who's down. They'll be kicking here from inside their own half. Richardson puts boot to ball. Briley catches, has a look up, invites Dion Cross to carry it forward, and Cross is crushed by a couple of defenders. Yeah, and that's a reward for a really solid defensive set. They'll now be approaching the 40 metre line on the second play. Noah Faluma with a good ball away. Here comes Lafay. 
Well, they've got themselves some distance already in the opening two tackles. Sneed. Orman Royd's there. Orman Royd just uh, carrying it an extra yard or two. That's all. Mella is the dummy half. Akin now. Back it goes. Is Sneed. Briley. Oh, and it's opening up again here. Lafay on that left hand flank, and Lafay still going. And Lafay still going. And an offload. And a pick up there over there by Sam Stone, but Stone's put down. They want to get on with it quickly. Here comes Sneed again. Sneed with a kick high. It's knocked by a castle for player and cost twist round. It's not, it's still five. They have to score here. It's still the fifth tackle. Still the last play. The ball's gone to ground. And somehow, somehow, the Tigers tame the situation. That's brilliant scramble defense, brilliant last ditch defense. They are determined to preserve this lead. That was excellent work in defence for the Tigers because the Red Devils threw the kitchen sink at them on that last play. There's not many. I mean, he's one of the strongest guys in Super League, Nenny McDonald. Ah, brilliant rear guard action from the Tigers. 11 minutes to go. Just a bit over. Eight points the difference. Who prevails? Castleford at the moment. Having the control of that two-score lead. Rob coming left. It's taken on by Wood, not going too far. Rob, it's back on the field, delivers it back again to Rob. Close play, trying to unpick the defensive threads of that Salford line, but it holds tight. Miller making the telling effort there. Here's Miller. Four tackles gone, though, they're still inside their own half. Salford, half job done at the moment, defensively. Richardson offers it off. Horn again going nowhere. Salford swarming forward with great enthusiasm and pace to cut down the Tigers' options. High in the air. Briley's underneath it. Down on one knee and safely, solidly taken. Looking for an out. Can't find one. Good chase again from Castleford. Here comes Cross. Fired out of the back by the pass from Sneed. Sneed again. Nofalona is getting himself involved as well. So the two wingers with early plays. Nella. It's uh, back with Akin, and it slips into the hands of Briley, and quickly away by Lafay, and suddenly Ross has got chance to move, and it's a high tackle, and it's a penalty for Salford, and that lifts them now. Yeah, Eli Kazim just crept up high. They were stretched again, the Tigers. Again, you see that willingness to play Great work from the outside backs in the opening two or three plays, just taking a bit of pressure off the forwards who've got through an awful lot of work defensively. And they're rewarded with position and possession now, Dave. Joe Westerman is off the field. That was the interchange that has brought Horn back on. So I tell you what, there's, there's not a great size to that Castleford line at the moment, is there? Not, not a huge pack at Salford, but they might just tip the balance on the scales just at this moment. Here's one of the bigger fellas, Orman Royd, still taking it. Castleford have pushed back onto their own line. Here's an opportunity. Mella goes out of dummy half. Darting left, but red by the home defence. Now it's switched back to Cust. This is going to be a, a, a driving effort from Wright. Pulled down. Now where's Mark Sneed? Where's Ryan Briley? They're all coming right, but the ball has gone left. That's where Sneed is. Sneed with a little step. Sneed trying to force his way over, but just puts down. So Mella runs up quickly to that dummy half again. Now it's with Cust. Cust with a kick to the corner. Over the hill, oh, just got a hand there. Just a hand from Senior. And how important was that? Because North Oloma was waiting. Well, the, the pressure is relieved momentarily because the Red Devils will get another set from 10 out. But Senior had to, he had to stick his arm out. It's a lovely kick off the side of the boot from Cade Cust. And that's a really important hand because you can see Norfoluma lurking, ready to pounce, ready to cross, ready to reduce the rears. Here comes Salford again, another set of six. Sneed with a short pass, almost opening things up, but Castleford's defence remains robust. It's now back with Sneed again. Across the line, Ormond Roy pushing hard, pushing hard. 
three gathering around quickly. And Held calls the referee. Another set of six. Joe Mella spinning it back. Sneed, Briley, and, and now with Lafay. He seems to have beaten the first man most times tonight, but not then. Castleford's defence was pincer-like. Sneed once more. Bucket comes. Oh, Mella put it back on the inside. Total miscommunication. I think the pass was aimed for Atkin, who was simply unaware it was coming his way. And that is a gift back for the Tigers. That's a rare error in possession for the Sulphur Red Devils. They've been very, very good. We've been used to seeing high quality, high precision attacking plays. Uh, and it's just a, a man who's not expecting a ball at King from Mella and a reprieve for the cast of the Tigers because that, that pressure you could feel was building. Seven minutes to go. Are they finally going to celebrate a winning night down the lane? Or is there yet a chance for Salford here? Here's Senior. What a night he's had, win or lose. It'll be a night he will remember for the tries he scored, the quality that he has provided. Not coming left. Not pushing on. That's what eventually good. goes down, the big man. Good Another carry. of the new players this season. This is Mella, Alex Mella. Two dummy halves on the field, and I think they mixed up. Who was going where then? It's Robert picked it up, and now it's Horn, and Horn with a little spring in his step. Springs up as well very quickly, and Rob now picks it up, and because of the speed of the play, the ball has got a bit of space in which to run, and gathers in some more yards. Last play, there's no value in the drop goal, surely. It's all about finishing this in an attacking position. Richardson puts it high, not the best of kicks, I don't think. It's not bad. Good hands to keep a hold of it, and eventually swarmed around by Salford defenders. And it's a high tackle. Penalty for Cass. What a big moment. What a big moment. Now, this is where you take the two. And they're not. They're going. No, they're going again. They're against going to go the again. Script. They're going to go again. Eat up the time. Eight points the difference. Trying a goal here wins it for absolute certain. Now they're going to just try and blast the way through in the shape of Kibola, who gets an offload away. And they're still hunting for a bit of match-winning glory here. But Hall's put down. Kane Rob waits again, spins it back. Miller can't get there first, but offside. Cade Cust, oh, it was knocked down at the play the ball. Knocked down from an offside position at the play the ball, right underneath the sticks. I think Richardson's opting for the two now, surely. Yeah, take the heat out of the game, take two points. Akrin reaches round from first marker and changes the direction of the ball. Penalty given for that action. Oh, no, they're not. They're, that's not a kick for touch. He's um, but they are two run balls it. on the field. There are two balls on the field. So they are going to run it. And they're going to try the meaty way first. A lot of muscle provided by Kabula. Kane Rob into that acting half position again. Looking to the blast away in. Salford's defenders rallying at the moment. They're looking for the touchline from 40 yards away almost. But eventually he's down to the ground and they have to play. Here it comes, Richardson. Offers it back on the inside again. Hall. All blast and bluster. But Salford are a match. This is Miller, bounces it inside for Horn. Horn held down, but loads of tackles in the bag and they are running through the time here as well, counting the clock down as much as anything. Salford have to get to the other end and score twice. So Cassavet are really content with what they've got here and they might have a bit more. Oh my word, what a night he's had. It's a match winner, it is Senior, his fourth of the night. It has been a memorable performance by him as an individual and by Castleford as a team, and they will get their first win of this 2024 Super League season. That's brilliant stuff from the Tigers again. Just enterprising. Never say die at the other end of the field. Some brilliant defensive work to repel the Red Devils. And then they're getting used to it, aren't they? They're getting used to spending time 
in threatening parts of the field. In the end, it was a simple catch and pass. It was a nice wide ball from the base of the rook from Kane Rob. A catch and pass from Sam Wood. And in his senior is the man of the moment. Four tries on the night. He owes that one to Wood. He owed a previous to Miller. But I tell you what, he's carved out a couple for himself as well. What a performance, what a game. Well, the simplest one on the night turns out to be the settler. But no wonder he's got a big grin on his face. Night to remember in so many ways, but especially for that individual. This is still a big kick here, you know. I mean, time running down. Player of the match tonight in his senior. Yeah, absolutely, without question. I think he's, he's tries, but not just that. His defensive work saved a couple of tries in there. A lot of grunt work from the backfield. 193 metres is ridiculous. It's a game full of enterprise, endeavour, no little skill, huge amounts of pace. And sometimes you can think too hard about who a player of the match might be. Not tonight. That was straightforward. Well, as I said, still a, a reasonably important kick, this, because two and a half minutes doesn't lend itself to a probability of a comeback, but it just just keeps the door slightly open. He kicks this, it's all over. Well, it, ma it matters to Danny Richardson because it preserves a perfect kicking record as well. Ensures we're talking about him, not Sneed. Oh, oh, he's hit the post. Hit the post. In the manner of the night, the drama continues. But 36 points to 24. Surely there's not time for Sorfan now, is there? No, I think the Casa... Sneed will go short from the kick-off here, but I think the night belongs to the Casa of the Tigers. Boy, they've done it tough. The fans have done it tough. Oh, he's gone too short. He's gone too short. Ball bounces. Oh, hang on, hang on. They waited till it got over the 10 metres. They let it bounce, and that's OK. That's OK. So they do get it back. Six again here, not that that matters. McDonald throws it inside, Cust hurls it left, they've got for everything here. And now on that left-hand side, Cross has made the running, the kick from Sneed, who saw that brilliantly, but Cross is dragged down by that recovering cast defence. There might still be a sting in the tail now. Back to Cust. Cust has a look, launches one over the top. McDonald steps back on the inside, he's still going. Castleford desperately hanging on. The referee blows his whistle, penalty for Salford, offside against Cass but there's only, what, 100 seconds left to go. Well, the Salford Devils, they're not going not gonna to let this go either. Referee stops the clock, but it won't be for long, and Salford will go on the attack from play one here. 89 seconds from here. That is surely an impossible ask now. Surely there's not time. We have seen some incredible endings to games in Super League down the years, but surely Castleford have done enough now, even if they do concede here. Sneed again, going left, Briley throws it out, Cross has to cut back on the inside, evading Horn, bowls it back to Sneed, who throws it to the middle, and a, a, a straightening up by Partington, who keeps it alive. They are desperate here, Sneed throws it over the top again. Still playing, still going, Lafay. Again, beating men as he takes it forward. Dummies, but not Horn, because Horn gets in and makes that big challenge. Into the final minute. Partington now throws it back. Budiayo has lost it. Miller picks it up, and that will be that, surely. That is the win for Castleford now. Well, first of all, let me take my hat off to both sides. I think this has been, for me, the game of the season. Uh, such an enjoyable watch. It's had everything, hasn't it? It's had controversy, it's had skill, flair, aggression. But you you give huge credit to the Casava Tigers. They knew very well what they were going to face when the Salford Red Devils came to town. And I think in the large part, certainly in the second half, they've dealt with that really well. They had a wobbly moment a couple of, uh, couple of minutes in, and as it starts to get heated now, a high shot and tempers start to boil over. Referee's trying to calm things down. Oh, he's still going. Still going. Hooter sounds in the background to confirm the victory. 
Referee's still got a decision to make here. He's not blown his whistle, so even though the hoots have sounded, the game's not finished, of course, until he blows his whistle. Referee's having a word with his touch judges. And the coaching staff just walked behind us across the gantry. Big smile on Danny Maguire's face. I don't know if that was genuine happiness or relief, Dave, but they're off the mark. Bit they're above. up and running. Bit above. Even if this was your 21st win of the season, you'd be very chuffed with this performance, wouldn't you, if you're a Cass fan? Oh, it's night and day from what we've seen. We've seen little bits, little snatches, glimpses of the potential this side in the 24 season. But nothing like this. That is the final kick. What a magnificent night for the Castleford team. The Tigers roar for the first time in 2024. And what a night he's had in his senior with four tries. Two or three of them will go down as some of the best that we've seen in Super League so far this year. Salford have played their part in a thrilling battle, but it's Castleford's night 36-24.